Previously on Da Vinci's Inquest. Oh, oh. Jesus Christ! She's still alive, for God's sake! Get an ambulance down there! Well, I was hoping that you might be able to help me find my sister, Roxy. <laughs> you remember interviewing some guy who woke up beside a dead woman? He runs a cafe down on Gore Street. What's your name? was my little sister. That's the guy who killed her. He kept giving her alcohol until she drank herself to death. And that's not all. We're thinking he did maybe half a dozen others the same way. Why hasn't he been arrested? Not enough evidence. Why did you tell me this? He's under surveillance. Somebody laid a beating on him, all right? What goes around comes around. Gabriella. Hi. Hi. I uh, just came by to pick up my autopsy tapes sure, for the sure, sure. Joseph's case. Yeah. Um. Gabby? Hi, Mom. Hi, sweetie. Mm. This is uh, Joseph's case. What's happening there? What's this big rush all about? Well, we've got that uh, homicide conference in Seattle coming up, and I'm using the Joseph's case for my presentation. Coffee? Uh, no. No, thanks. Can I go with you guys? Well, you'll have to ask your dad. I know that I will be too busy to spend any time with you. He says I want to spend any time with you. Well, thank you very much. No, I don't think so. It's a working weekend. I don't really see the point. Well, I can stay here by myself then. Oh, you better be by yourself. Why don't you just go grab your knapsack, get ready for school? No. Okay. This Joseph's case, uh, do you really think we should be poking our nose into that again? Well, other jurisdictions might learn from our mistakes. It's what the conference is about. Other jurisdictions already received our recommendations. Yeah, but those recommendations are meaningless unless they understand the mistakes that were made. Well, see, here's the downside as far as I see it. Uh, those of us who made mistakes and then learn from them may suffer repercussions in terms of our careers, no? I think you're overreacting. Really? Yeah, yeah. Can I please have the tapes? Yeah, sure. Go there. Thank you. How far are you planning on taking this? Charlie Joseph's murder is still unsolved. It would be nice to know what happened there. That's right. And that's a uh, homicide investigation, isn't it, still? Uh-huh. I gotta go. Oh, Gabby, I can run you to school if you want. Actually, no. I, I swear on my way, I'll drop her. I want to talk to her. Whatever. Mm. Bye, honey. Bye, Mom. Bye, Mom. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Just wait a second. Did your mother mention anything to you about um, leaving Vancouver, working somewhere else? A few months ago, but I think she gave up on the idea. Why? Just curious because. Uh... Yeah. We're on Spanish banks. 
I'll call body pickup. Yeah. Boy, once again, the world's a little lighter today. You're beginning to get on my nerves, Danny. You don't seem to get the big picture. This in the schoolyard where you can jump the hall monitor and whack him. You buried a narc. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You said take care of business. I took care. Now, you got to respect my move. You didn't take care. All you did was yap, 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 You yap, didn't yap, give yap. me a chance to take care of any. Look, I've been out here for five years taking care of business, setting up this operation. You come out here, Francois comes out here, you know, you're trying to take advantage of my connections and my rep. Your rep is a loose cannon. Yeah, bingo. <laughs> That's my way. Nobody knows what I'm going to do. Look at you. You've been walking around with crap in your pants ever since I whacked that narc. That's my way, Danny. Like the Chinese warlord. You know, withdraw like a mountain, advance like a shitstorm. How about quiet as a fish in the deep? You ever heard of that one? <laughs> fish got one purpose in life. To get caught and deep fried. It's like everybody that knows you knows my business. Now I'm sweating about what Summer knows. What's she gonna tell? She know you whacked him? Summer's cool. Listen to me. It's the little details that are gonna sink us. Mm -hmm. One guy talks to another guy, he gets overheard, all of a sudden we're looking at a conspiracy beef that includes your grandmother. Well, That's you're serious. acting real nervous now. I'm gonna keep acting that way until we dig up this goddamn narc and I check him for a tape recorder. Enough bullshit! I wanna do this tonight. Bye. Okay, Jesus. Meet me at the club in a couple hours. We'll go from there. Okay, I'm still sitting on 50 keys. Where are we with that? Yeah, I got the money for that. We'll do that uh, tomorrow. 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 I'll set it up. Good. I'll see you later. Okay. Oh, Danny. Dress warm. Patricia Da Vinci wants to disinter Charlie Josephs and do a second autopsy. She wants to dig the bastard up. I just said that. Have you made any progress on this case at all? Nothing that we didn't know before. Mick and Angie put a backup surveillance team on him. That's the first and last time he goes out the back door. Jesus, Leo. Well, my take is that it's a case of vigilante justice. Well, all right, if that's your angle, who knew about him? Oh, we did. The coroner's office, his mother. Yeah, 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 we know all that. Who else? The prostitute who survived one of his attacks, Gloria, she came to see me in my office the morning he was killed to tell me that she'd seen him that night. You talked to her since? Well, I haven't been able to locate her. She's not working the streets anymore. Find her. We all know this guy deserved whatever he got. This is something else now. Patricia Da Vinci's got a bug up her ass. If she starts making noises about your surveillance screwing up, we've all got a problem. I'll find Gloria. Anything else? No. Just... Keep an eye on whatever Patricia does next, will you? Okay. Hey, some of us are getting up a little poker Friday night yet for it. Penny ante should be fun. Penny ante? I don't know. The old man would roll over in his grave if he knew I was playing poker for fun. Don't think so. <laughs> Danny says he was a professional gambler. Oh, yeah? Old Phil's profession was more on the order of the short con. And I gave Danny and I a piece of advice when we were growing up. He said, uh, never eat at a place called Mom's. Don't play cards with a guy called Doc. And never sleep with somebody who's got more problems than you do. <laughs> the last one's good. Leary. I'll write that one on my bathroom mirror. His name is Goose. Yeah. Flowers. Hey, I didn't name him. Could you do me a favor and run his name through up there for me? I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Hey, Leo. Looks like we got a possible homicide down at Spanish Banks. Boss, this job coming to an office? I don't think you heard me say that. Let's just get you on permanent, then we can talk about an office.
Anything else we should be thinking of doing while we wait? No, no, we're doing fine, we're doing fine. Hey, Leo. Nick, uh, Wednesday here's gonna step up to the big league, so I'm gonna give him the chance to the overview on this one, okay? Oh, uh, they got spring training camp for corners now, huh? <laughs> You're up, rookie. Okay. Okay, okay. First thing I notice is the unnatural position of the body. Automatically makes me think foul play. Uh, more likely he croaked from the foul odor. Low tide, he just dropped dead from the smell, and then the tide came in and turned the body around. Yeah, well, I was going to say that water could have caused the unusual position, but he's not wet on the exposed side. Well, maybe it happened yesterday. The sun could have dried him off. Jesus Christ, ways to make him look pretty bad right here. Come on, tell him what else we found. Check the notes. Okay, bright pink face. That's a carbon monoxide indicator, right? Uh, but I don't see any carbon monoxide source around here. So, could have been on a boat. Got dizzy from carbon monoxide, fell overboard, and got washed up here. Or he could have been in a parking lot in a car, sucking fumes. Yeah. Stumbled out, looking for air, and didn't make it. So it was an accident? Why'd you call homicide? Why'd you call homicide? You called homicide. Why did I call him? To give me grief, apparently. Winston, come on. <laughs> Tell the guys what else we found. Okay, but he didn't have any ID in his pocket. Right. But he did have a pager. And? And a US $100 bill. And? Condoms. That ah, sounds like a typical teenager to me. Uh, I think this kid's a prostitute. Good call. Take your base. Unbelievable. You're bad. Hey, pass. It's all yours, baby. Here you go. Unusual, suspicious circumstances. Your case. Hey, uh, can you stick? I gotta go see the pathologist. Don't ask. Go ahead. Hey, Dominic. You got a minute? Sure, go on. You know, Regan and your ex-old lady are stirring up the ashes on that Charlie Joseph murder. That's a homicide investigation. That's not my jurisdiction. Yeah, but here's the scenario. We think that somebody tipped him that he was under surveillance. Only we don't know how that happened. So what's your point here? Well, who knew he was under surveillance? We knew. You knew. Anybody else? Well, it's pretty sloppy work. He might have got hinky. Figured it out himself. And Reagan wants me to pursue the vigilante justice angle. Revenge is usually a lover or a relative. Yeah, well, the brother crossed my mind. Goose, flowers, you know, getting revenge for his sister. How the hell does he figure out that Joseph is the main suspect? Well, that's my problem. You know, how do you put that together? So? What exactly are you asking for here? Well, you know that Patricia is nagging Regan to dig up Joseph's body. What for? Well, old buddy, uh, that's what I gotta find out. All right, I'll get back to you. Prostitutes Reform Organization, good afternoon. Thank you. You came to see me the morning that Joseph's was murdered. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. A lot of the girls were celebrating when they heard somebody took that son of a bitch off. Any idea who that somebody might be? Whoever it was, it's appreciated. Remember anything else that might be relevant? Well, I saw you standing outside Joseph's cafe. You and uh, some tall native guy. Is that relevant? Well, I was checking Joseph's out, but uh, I don't remember any guy. Anyway, is that it? Yep, that's it. What's that for? Oh, it's a donation for whatever it is you're doing around here. Thanks. It's appreciated. This, uh, this looks good on you, Gloria. Prostitute. Might be a homicide. On top, she's backed up. Homicide, Detective Cosmo. Yeah? Where? All right, we'll be right over. We've got a body around the corner. It's your brother's club.
Well, he just didn't climb in there by himself. No. Somebody wanted to keep him on ice. I think it's a vain attempt at disguising time and death. Well, maybe. Maybe they just wanted to make it easier to cut him up. There's a meat saw over the corner there. I didn't find any ID, but I uh, found this inside his boot. Oh, great. Tape recorder. So I'd go down there to see if I'm out here short. And I see they got this freezer in there. So, hey, I figured that might be my problem. But the landlord sends me down to check on the main power box. Don't touch the freezer. Anybody know about you and Danny? No. You sure? Mm-hmm. You gotta stay on this one for me, all right? Well, there's no obvious cause looking at the body. Safe pass on an accident, though. Dominic, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna be on this case. This club here belongs to my brother. What the hell happened here? What? This is my brother, Danny. Uh, Detective Cosmo, the coroner, Dominic Da Vinci. Listen, you got a bit of a problem in your cooler here. I gotta take myself off this case. Detective Cosmo will be taking point. It's your mixed brother, huh? Somebody wanna tell me what's going on? Yeah, in a minute. Excuse me. The, uh, the brother there looks pretty handy. Can't take care of himself, can he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mick asked me if I'd stay on this. Oh, on what? Stay on what? There's a dead man in the freezer. Oh, Jesus. Danny! Hey, get back. Get away from there. Come on, Danny. Danny. Christ. Come on. Come on. Who is he? Let's get out of here. God damn it. Now I gotta worry about contamination. Just calm yourself down right now. Calm, all right? What the hell do you think you're doing? Regan wants me to follow up on why you want to dig up Charlie Josephs. Well, I want to take a closer look at his wrist. I've got the photographs. Sonny? Thanks. Take a look at his wrist. There's a ligature mark which appears to have the pattern of constriction. Somebody tied him up with ropes, that's what you said. I thought the marks were consistent with the knotted rope. Okay. Well, what do you think it is now? Well, I wouldn't want to speculate just yet. All I can say is that I'm not certain it's a rope. I think this is worth all the hassle of a disinternment order. We got a homicide. All right, put him in the freezer. He just came from one. Good. I won't have to freeze his brain before I section it. I got a meeting. Excuse me. Jimmy, did you approve a disinternment order for Charlie Josephs? Well, Patricia's requested it, but I haven't approved it yet. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure who I should be addressing this to. The ex is on her way up. Did you know she's presenting the Charlie Joseph's case at the homicide conference in Seattle? No, I did not. She didn't mention it. Gentlemen. I've taken a look at uh, Joseph's autopsy photos and toxicology reports. He consumed a massive ingestion of alcohol before he was dumped in the sea, similar to what we saw in the prostitutes you believe he murdered. And again, that would have to be a voluntary intake of the alcohol. Which suggests somebody was familiar with his M.O. Right. You see, before you and Regan took this to the press, that knowledge was limited to ourselves and the actual investigators, okay? Correct. And I think I can narrow it down even further. In my opinion, the wrist ligature mark shows no evidence consistent with a polypro rope, as Sonny suggested. Lividity shows a pattern of constriction, I agree. But I see evidence of two thin rail marks. Consistent with? Consistent with a handcuff. This points in a pretty specific direction. Does anybody else know about this? No, no. I think this should go directly to Regan. He can decide how to proceed. 
and I would like your support for disinterment. I need to do some histological work on the wrist mark before I can be absolutely sure. Let me talk to Regan first. Wait about five minutes. Should I call anybody? No. No? Where's this gonna lead to? <sighs> I'll be all right, Mick. Don't worry about it. You know who the guy in the freezer was? No? This one, whatever happens to me, keep your head down, keep your distance, don't say shit. Forget it. I want to help you out. This here. is how you can help me. Okay, stay ignorant. I'm sitting on the landmine. They found a tape on this guy, you know. Well, all right. That's good for me if he was taping. Is it? Yeah. Listen to it, they'll know. Okay. All right. You need anything, okay? 24 seconds. All right. Okay? You stay tight. Back. These two are homicide investigators from the RCMP. They're going to be working this with us. That, uh, that guy they found in your brother's club was an RCMP undercover narc. Remember what I said, Nick? From the preliminary, death appears to be the result of internal suffocation from carbon monoxide. That's what I said. Right on the money. You're interrupting the doctor. However, upon closer examination, I found acute inflammation in his nostrils and mouth. It's especially prevalent here in his trachea and lungs. It's consistent with a victim having inhaled a noxious substance. Yeah? Like what, for example? I can't be sure. Talk should be able to tell us. There's a couple of other artifacts that might help. Chick found some kind of paint stains on his pants and paint chips under his fingers. You see where his knuckles and fists are skinned raw? Yeah, it looks like he was beating on something. Or somebody. Yeah. His fingernails are broken. That's the way like he's, he's clawing his way out of something. Whoa. You got yourself a good one here. All right. Gonna ask you, oh yeah, can you send everything we have on teenage male prostitutes down to Morris? He's gonna follow up on that boy on the on the beach. You look nice today. Thank you. Uh, I think Sonia Don did a story on that last year. I can give Morris her number. Yeah. Well, let's not reveal all my trade secrets to him on the first day. Let's let him develop his own sources. What do you think? Charlie's mother, Mrs. Josephs, is waiting for you. Mrs. Josephs. Well, what can I do for you? Well, last night I got a visit from a woman who says she's looking into who killed Charlie. Said she's from your office. From my office? Well, the same last name. Is she any relation to you? No, well, yeah. She's my ex, but she's also a chief pathologist here. She and the police are looking into the uh, evidence found in your son's death at this moment, and... You should be talking to them. Well, I'm speaking to you. You're the one who came to me, got me to tell the police all about him. You said that would be the best way to protect him. Well, he was not protected, was he? Oh, I know. I know what you're all thinking. Charlie deserved what he got. Well, I don't make excuses for what he did, killing those poor women, if he killed them. But he did not deserve to be beaten to death. Look, what I think is that your son's death was a crime, no matter what the circumstances. And it's my view that he deserved a fair trial. Well, you tell that woman that I do not want to talk to her anymore. She kept bringing up Charlie's childhood, his upbringing. But what she really wanted to know was what kind of a mother I was. It sounded like she was going to write a book about him. My son dead and buried, and I want him left in peace. Yes, ma'am. What I can promise is that I'll look into it, and I'll let you know what's happening. Oh, yes. 
You told me that once before. Why should I believe you this time? You guys said when I became an informant, you were going to protect me. Yeah, so far that's true. You got a problem? I can't get a cup of coffee without cops handing me cream and sugar. I got two RCMP homicide cops all over my ass. Homicide cops? What do they want? They know about my score and some of that pure dope from the Quebecois dudes that got shot. You guys were the only ones that knew about that. You said I was covered for that. Hang on. They have access to arrest files. They don't know that you're an informant for us unless you told them. You think I'm stupid? I didn't say shit about that. What's the defense homicide angle now? They're asking about some guy they found in a freezer at a nightclub. Like I'm supposed to know about that. Probably figured there's some kind of a connection. Mm -hmm. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Did they mention any names to you? Yeah, they're looking at two guys out of Montreal, Leon and Danny. Leon and Danny. Yeah. You been staying clean? Except for the methadone. That shit's horrible. Things going with you, brother? No idea. Haven't heard yet. Anything I can do to help with that? I'll keep my ear to the ground. Anything, anytime. Leo, my office. Thanks for that, Leo. This is Patricia Da Vinci's findings on Joseph's. She says somebody liquored him up before they beat the hell out of him. And she also claims that whoever did it restrained him with handcuffs. Handcuffs? Well, anybody can get a hold of a pair of handcuffs. Is that who your prime suspect is? Anybody? I think we need a fresh pair of eyes on this, Leo. Now, wait a minute. You can't take me off, Josephs. It was my screw-up that kept the bastard on the street in the first place, and Jesus, did I take the stick for it. You gotta give me a chance to clear this up. You ask me to step aside now, you're laying a goddamn curse on me that I'll never get clear of. Doesn't do it. But I have a suspect. The brother, Goose Flowers. He had a motive and he was in town the night Josephs was killed. How the hell did he know to target Josephs? Beats me. But I just got a call from the RCMP in Calgary, and they tell me that Flowers is a tribal police officer on a reserve just south of there. And he knows I want to talk to him. Okay. You're hanging by a thread, Leo. There were Mounties all over the place at the autopsy. I already gave them my determination. Yeah, well, technically, we're supposed to be working together on this. So I need to know how he died. He drowned. Fresh water? No, salt. Anything else? Well, I did recover some skin from under his fingernails, and if the DNA isn't too degraded by the water, that could provide some more evidence. Okay, it's great, thanks. Uh, by the way, um, I don't know whether this is connected or not, but I'm pretty sure that that red-headed torso you guys found on commercial drive was also frozen before it got cut up. The limbs were sawed through very cleanly, uh, as if it was done with a meat saw. Doctor? Uh huh. You want it upstairs? Sorry. I thought Mrs. Joseph might shed some light on his medical history. Well, like he got his tonsils out that turned him into a killer? I was only trying to put his background in perspective for my talk. And what's that going to do? It's going to help homicide solve the murder? No, but it might aid us in keeping this kind of thing from happening again. Oh. That is your mandate, isn't it? Prevention? We're just concerned about the attention it may bring to this office when we've already improved procedure. <laughs> Look, the last thing I want to do is to kick dirt on the coroner's office, but I, I, I am beginning to feel like I'm being pressured into whitewashing what we did do wrong. All of us made mistakes. One more thing before you go. If you're planning to write a book on Joseph's, you can take a leave of absence and do it. I'd prefer you didn't write it on my nickel. And what made you think that I was writing a book? Well, Mrs. Joseph's, she thinks so. And I think that's why you're poking your nose into Charlie Boy's murder, because your book would have a lot more value if you had a final chapter, right? <laughs> if I want to write a book, I don't need anybody's permission. Have you decided to issue a warrant for Joseph's disinterment? If it's absolutely necessary. 
Mrs. Joseph's made it perfectly clear she'd raise hell if we did. Let me know when you decide. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Hey, Mick. Let's go for coffee. Is there anything that you can tell me about what Danny was into? Danny's business is his own, Ange. You know, he's had some pretty tough times. He's been through some bad shit, but I'm telling you, there's nothing I wouldn't do for the guy. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah, and I know you love him, Nick, all right? You don't have to explain. But just talking to you about this puts my career on the line. I understand that. You want to back out, you go ahead. I understand. Yeah? Yeah, I do. <sighs> RCMP analyzed the tape. They recovered from their agent. There was nothing on it. It wasn't turned on for the meat. It was whoever killed him. Shit. Danny was counting on that tape to help him out. Got a minute? Yeah. Go on in. So, I understand you're thinking of digging up Charles Josephs. Or would you get something like that? Dominic, when your wife calls me and wants to know about the Josephs case, it makes me a little curious as to why things are heating up. Well, she's my ex-wife. What does she want from you? Press coverage for a paper at the Homicide Conference and background on Leo Shannon. Talk said that the noxious substance the boy inhaled was quicklime. So what is, is that what killed him? That combined with carbon monoxide. They also said that the paint chips were from a car. Lab is still working on make and model. Yeah? Quicklime, isn't that usually used for hasten decomposition? Yeah, it's also in whitewash, which is what the stains in Owen's pants turned out to be. And I was thinking maybe, maybe, maybe the guy who picked him up was a painter. Good. Huh. Better call Homicide, let him know what we've got. Don't forget to start a case. Yeah. Dominic. Oh, there you are. Patricia's really taking a beat on you. Yeah, I know. What the hell for? Are you aware of her opinion about the ligature marks? Yeah. She thinks that uh, he was restrained by the head. She thinks that uh, he was restrained using a handcuff. Handcuff. How the hell does that lead to me? Oh, come on, Leo. Let's go through it, okay? You're the one that missed him as a suspect in an early case. In fact, you interviewed the guy when he's in bed with a dead woman. You let him slide. Yeah, so I've been told more than a few times. Well, then the investigation heats up all over again, and you're on the point there with Leary. I was bumped from that. Right. And you're not in the clear over that, you know. What? Hey, you went undercover. Oh. Did you ever stop to think that maybe it was you that tipped him he was being watched? Come on. He went out and tried to kill somebody after I talked to him again. Forget that. Oh, 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 oh man, you are ducking. Hey, what are you trying to do? Fit me for this? Fit you for what? His goddamn murder. Look, whoever did it knew his movements, knew how to get at him. I know I didn't kill him. I don't think you did. Hey, you can say that again louder. What am I going to do about Patricia? Well, what do you guys normally do when you want to ensure you can do your jobs properly? You don't want to alert a suspect as to a possible investigation. Ask Regan for a press banner. That's right. You know where we stand. We don't want to hinder any police investigations over here. Okay. What the hell am I supposed to do about her wanting to dig the bastard up? Well, if you're already pursuing the handcuff angle on the Joseph's case there, I don't see where it's necessary. Hey, right. I'm all over that. So I wanted to make sure you have good counsel. Tell him thanks. So what's the case against me? So far, it's all circumstantial, unless the DNA reports come back positive. These things take time. Mounties have any wiretap evidence? They have some telephone conversations between you and Leon. You could probably give him some advice there, help yourself out. Well, there's nothing to do any of that. My impression is that it's Leon they want. Francois would not object if you sacrifice something to get yourself clean. Look, I don't know anything about Leon that can help me. So how long am I going to be held in here? That's where we have a problem. 
What do you know about a half-key bust for heroin in Montreal? Christ, that's bullshit. Yeah, well, bullshit or not, there's a Canada-wide warrant on you, and Montreal's got six days to come and get you. Now I'm looking into that, okay? Yeah, okay. Well, let me know. Bye. Can you tell Leon I appreciate him sending you in here and not to worry about his ass till I get out? Then he can panic. Hey, Leo. The Goose Flowers called. Did he leave a number? No, he said he'd call you when he got to town. Hey, did he say when he was coming? No. He said he wanted to clear up a few things with you. Oh. Okay, thanks. You approved my taking a second look at Joseph's autopsy results. Correct. Now I'm asking you to keep those results confidential. That's what I've been doing. Good. So I have no need to be concerned about your presentation at a homicide conference? It was my intention to discuss the murders of Joseph's victims, not the murder of Joseph himself. That is an ongoing investigation. Well, actually, since Joseph's died before we could get a conviction or a confession out of him, I thought it might be better if we reopened those prostitute murders until we finally satisfied that he was, in fact, the killer. You see, his mother is threatening to sue us for slander. Are you telling me I can't discuss any aspect of the case? Well, until it's officially closed, I think it might be better if you didn't speculate publicly. Thanks for your cooperation on this, Patricia. Appreciate it. doing? Detective Leary, homicide. Didn't do it. <laughs> Wanna know, uh, know this guy? Nah. Well, I knew who the guy was, yeah. but I never met him. Do you want to talk to Rob over there? They were friends. Which guy's that? The one in the black. One in the black? Thanks. Rob? Yeah? Detective Leary, homicide. Beat it. I want to know if you ever seen this guy around. Yeah? Yeah? Saw about him in the newspaper. Owen, I didn't know his last name. Yeah. Owen Maxwell. Piss off. Yeah, we got that off his pager service. The newspaper didn't say how he died. Was it an OD or something? Maybe. Was he into drugs? <laughs> you don't want to be going down on Grandpa straight. Okay. When was the last time you saw him? We were both working a couple of nights ago. A trick. This guy. Kind of weird, but he paid good. He didn't want to go with me again, so he took Owen. Did tell you his name? No. Well, you see, it was kind of weird. What do you mean by that? How, how weird? He was, like, really paranoid that his neighbors might see him. So he'd get you to climb in the trunk of his car. Then he'd pull into the garage, let you out. Sneak you around back into the basement. Made you ride in the trunk of his car? Yeah. Classy guy. Remember where the house was? Uh-huh. I was only ever inside. When I left, it was back in the trunk. Right. What about, uh, what about the car? Tell me more about it. <laughs> Homicide, Shannon. Where are you? I'll be there in five minutes. You were looking for me. Uh huh. You're not wearing a wire, are you? No. Are you? No. Okay, uh, here's where we're at. There's been a second look taken at the autopsy on Charlie Joseph's. And new evidence that whoever killed him restrained him using handcuffs. And you being tribal police and having access to handcuffs. 
And that's all you've got? That's all we got. Well, let's say I killed him. Okay. Let's say you did. Let's say I pointed him to you. I'm not going to mention either of those things. What are you going to say? I was already on my way back to Calgary the night Joseph's got done. I have people that will vouch for affidavits if necessary. Okay. Well, we should uh, get back up to interview and make this official with my sergeant. Sure. Hey. If you ever get out my way, you make sure you give me a call. Hello there. Hey, Leary. Morris, good work on the kid. Thank you, man. How's the case coming? I talked to a friend of Owen's, another male prostitute. Says he saw some guy pick Owen up. Probably made him ride in the trunk of his car. Leaky muffler, maybe. That would explain the carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah, it seems likely. I'm still trying to figure out this quickline factor he came up with. Could be. He was riding in the trunk. The car hits a pothole. The stuff spills out. Owen's breathing it in. Yeah, and he's trying like hell to beat his way out of the trunk. But he's groggy from the carbon monoxide, so the guy goes to his trunk, finds him dead, dumps him. Mm, it could be. Uh, don't get locked into that, though. You can get the blinders on, we could miss something important. Sure. Owen's friend gave me a real good description of the car he was picked up in, but doesn't remember if he saw the plate or not. I'll work on that. Take him to a hypnotist. See what he can remember. A good idea. The guy's gonna be good. <laughs> You're not gonna get rid of me, man. I got a taste. Let me know how it turns out, yeah? I will. You took a hard risk coming here. What, you afraid I'll damage my reputation? It's too late for that. You're a criminal, Danny, and I didn't see it. So you think you know me now, huh? Oh, yeah. I know a lot about you now. I know that you were never in the army. I know you got a heavy rap sheet in Montreal, possession, possession with intent, assault, some real bad associates. I told you you weren't going to like what you found out. What I don't like is that you played me. <sighs> Who is it, Danny, huh? What, you get a thrill getting some with a police officer? Is that it? Well, you know that wasn't it. Do I? Hey. You disappointed me. What was I going to say? I had a bad past. You had a bad past. You got to make something in your life. I don't get a chance to do that. If you would have been straight with me, you would have got that chance. I'm sorry. Me too. that I won't be going to the homicide conference. That should please you. No, no, hey, come on. Where are you going? That wasn't what we tried to do. Oh, please. You and Jim did everything you could to shut me down on Charlie Joseph's. The murder of these young women was tragic, not to be exploited. Fine, I agree. But what you did leaves me feeling like you are sandbagging my career. That's not my intention at all, Holmes. No one's sandbagging anybody here unless, of course, there is a job offer that everybody doesn't know about. Nothing specific. And, and what if there was? Huh? You got the top job in Vancouver, correct? Yes. Okay, if there's another job, it's out of town. Now, what happens to Gabrielle if it's out of town? If and when I decide to leave, then we will have that conversation. No, we're having that conversation right now, right here and now. What will happen? I wouldn't take her away from you if that's what you're worried about. Okay. Sorry, I really wanted to know. And I'm pretty sure Gabriella would have a say in whatever decision was made. Did you get a job off? 
No. Did you? No. When and if I get one that's attractive and may take me out of town, you will know. Good night. Yeah. Looking forward to that book. I'll read that with interest. All it needs is the last chapter. 